us about the science of the canopy. The tribe's people are very adventurous. Oh, kind of like us then. <laughs> I'm not so sure. You don't strike me as the type to enjoy danger. The scions of the canopy are a bunch of thrill seekers. They love extreme sports like rock climbing, rappelling, volcano parkour, or even bungee jumping without a rope while a Yunkasaur stands at the edge and uses its tongue to catch them. <laughs> sound like something you'd be interested in? Okay, that does sound different from our usual adventures. Paimon's not doing any of that. She can just cheer you on from the sidelines. That's Huayna, the tribal chief. Let's head over to him. Chaska. Nice to see you again, Huayna. I'm afraid we don't have time for pleasantries, so I'll get right to it. We're here for the Spirit Speaker Stone. Whoa, hold on a second. At least tell me why you need it first. My friend Kachina is trapped within the Night Kingdom. We need the stone to find her ancient name and rescue her. Rescue her? From the Night Kingdom? That's right. I'm sorry, but someone needs to tell you what you don't want to hear. Going there, a mature warrior would never make such a foolish decision. The nature of battle is unpredictable. You never know how it's going to end. Losing a friend is tragic, but when that happens, the best thing you can do is focus on how to prevent further casualties. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Chief Wina. But if the price of maturity is abandoning a friend in need, I'll choose foolishness any day. If Kachina's still holding on, then so will I. I thought you might say that. Is something wrong, Wyna? This doesn't seem like you. Life isn't complete without taking risks. That's always been your mantra. <laughs> it's nothing. The Night Kingdom is a dangerous place. Can't blame me for checking if you were up to the task. If you're that determined, far be it from me to stop you. Here's the stone. Keep it safe, okay? It's not like we have a spare. Thank you. Huh. Seems like you two go way back. But aren't you from the Flower Feather Clan, Chaska? Oh, Chaska's a peacekeeper. So she's famous throughout the tribes. She's always the one people call to resolve conflicts. So we slowly got to know each other that way. Her younger sister, Queechee's always hanging around our tribe, too. She's helped us out a lot in the past. Oh, you have a younger sister? Yes. I'll introduce you to her sometime. But let's get back to business. Wayna, how do we use the stone? As you probably know, your intended destination is completely different from the real world. The Night Kingdom is like a river flowing with concepts. And the ancient name you seek is like a tiny fish swimming downstream. In that sense, the stone is like a fishing boat drifting down the river, but the boat alone isn't enough. You need a fisherman experienced enough to steer it in the right direction. We couldn't do that ourselves? With a little practice, I'm sure you could. You have the strength and the talent. If you want to make sure this works, though, I could recommend someone to you. Who? Vichama. A legendary warrior and scout from our tribe. He's got a keen eye and a well-honed intuition. Even his ancient name means to seek. If you're fishing for a name, you're gonna want him on the boat. Vichama? Why does that name sound familiar? He's one of Auntie Atea's hot spring buddies. I've heard stories about him. Where can we find him? Ever since Malco passed, 
He spends most of his time gazing out at the scenery from the cliff tops. Follow the path that way, and I'm sure you'll find him. Thank you. We'll go look for him there. <sighs> Good luck. I hope everything goes well. Cliff tops. Ah, that must be him. Hello there, are you Vichama? That's me. Did you need something? What? You're saying you can bring someone back from the Night Kingdom? How is that even possible? think about it. Anything's possible in that kind of place. But that would mean... Are you okay? You don't look so good. Mm hmm. Everything's fine. I'll help you, but I do have a small request. After I help you find Kachina's ancient name, I want to use the stone to look for my friends as well. Your friend? someone named Malco, is that who you're talking about? Yes, but I'd rather not get into it if it's all the same to you. That's not a problem. We agree to your request. Yeah. Since you're helping us find Kachina's ancient name, it's only right that we return the favor. Then we're agreed. Can I have a look at the stone? see. From what I can tell, it functions almost like an abyssal pylon. Both connect the Night Kingdom to the living world. Once the connection is established, the abyss will come surging through the opening like a predator honing in on the scent of blood. So we have to be sure not to use it in a tribal settlement. Wow, you got all that just from looking at it? I just picked up on the basics, really. I still have no idea why it works. You said someone named Sit Lali invented this. They must be a genius. I'll go find an open area and start setting things up. In the meantime, I need you to get two things for me. We'll go right away. What do you need? First, I'll need some hook ropes. Pretty much every store around here carries them, so no need to go anywhere special. Oh, and I need to build a net out of them, so make sure you get a good amount. Wait, are you saying you're going to use a real net to catch Kachina's ancient name? How does that work when one's tangible and one's not? By creating something tangible in our world, like a net, we can create a connection to a corresponding concept in the Night Kingdom. Basically, I'm going to use the concept of a net to catch something equally intangible. An ancient name. Oh, I see. What about the second thing you needed? Right. I need one... No, two chunks of obsidian. 
Once we bring the ancient names into our world, we'll need a place to store them. Normally, you can only get obsidian from the Children of Echoes, but I heard there's a traveling merchant from that tribe around here somewhere, so maybe you can try your luck there. Gotcha! All right, let's split up. See that clearing? Let's meet over there when you're done. Oh, and you can send someone with me if you want. In case you're worried, I might take the stone for myself. Mm, what do you think, Chaska? <laughs> There's no need. Lana spoke highly of you. That means you're trustworthy. <sighs> I appreciate it. Even though that doesn't mean much to me anymore. Anyway, it'll take some time to set everything up, so no need to rush. I'll see you in a bit. What an odd guy. He seems so defeated, but also really invested in the stone at the same time. I don't have any more insight than you, Paimon. Let's just focus on the preparations for now. Hang on, Kachina. We're coming for you. ropes for sale? Hook ropes? As in rock climbing equipment? Yes. How much for your whole stock? Oh, the whole thing? Oh, let me see. That would be 30,000 mora in total. De Deal. Wait, really? What, you want me to drive down the price? We just need these as fast as possible. Thanks. Oh, uh, no problem at all. I'll even pass along some information on the house. These ropes are usually used by rock climbing enthusiasts. Uh, if you want to learn, Roka's the person you want to ask. All right, that's everything. Here you go. Now we need the obsidian. Let's go talk to the traveling merchant Bichama mentioned. Excuse me, do you sell obsidian? Why, yes. <laughs> I've got a chunk for sale right over there. Perfect. Is that the only one, though? We actually need two. Hmm. That might be tough. Uh, tell you what. I'll take a look through these boxes over here, and, and we'll see what we can find. Thank you so much. We'll wait here. Huh. <sighs> Relax. Everything's going according to plan. I know, it's just... I could tell Vichama feels the same way about his friend that I do about Kachina. I hope this chunk of obsidian isn't the only one. Kachina always carries all sorts of shiny stones with her. If I was the one trapped in the Night Kingdom, she'd have a whole pile of obsidian ready in a heartbeat. Well, would you look at that? I did bring an extra. <laughs> Here you go, young lady. How does it look? Perfect! Thank you. How much do I owe you? If you hadn't shown up, these stones would have just sat here collecting dust. I'll take 3,000 mora for both. Here you go. By the way, I heard you mention Vichama just now. You run in an errand for him, then? How's he doing? Melko's been gone for five years now. It's about time he started to move forward. Do you know what happened between them? I heard about it in passing while I was out drinking one night. 
but I don't know all the details. Michama and Melko grew up together, and even made a name for themselves together. Melko was an amazing fighter, capable of knocking out multiple opponents in a single hit, while Vichama excelled at scouting and analyzing the battlefield. The two made an excellent team, and managed to beat back the Abyss several times. Five years ago, they both emerged triumphant in the pilgrimage, and were placed on the same team to fight the Abyss. But on the eve of battle, the Abyss launched an attack on their tribe, and Bichama suffered an injury to his leg while attempting to rescue someone. Then what happened? The team agreed that he couldn't fight the Abyss in his condition. Bichama didn't argue. He knew going to the front lines with an injured leg would make him a burden in battle. So they raised the issue with the Pyro Archon, and she agreed to let him stay behind. It's just... Melko and the others ended up facing hordes of abyssal monsters in numbers that far exceeded anyone's expectations. The team made an error in judgment, and they fell to the onslaught. Vichama went into a deep depression after that. He blames himself for everything. Oh, you're not wrong. But it's possible he chooses to blame himself. Not because he did something wrong, but because he wasn't able to do anything at all. I've tried convincing him to move forward, to stop uh, dwelling on the past. But the shadow of Melko's death hangs over him still. The Abyss has caused so much suffering, and some wounds never heal. I wish there was something he could do to make himself feel better, but... Uh, anyway, that's the gist of it. Maybe you could help him talk things through sometime. I would really appreciate it. Did you get everything? Yep, it's all here. When do we start? I've made all the necessary adjustments, so we're good to go. As agreed, I'll help you find Kachina's ancient name, and then you return the favor. Go ahead. Yes. After Malko fell, I scoured the battlefield to see what happened. It turned out he wasn't bested by some impossibly powerful foe. He was dragged to his grave by the sheer number of enemies. If I had been there, I would have been able to sense the danger. I could have warned them not to advance. I've always blamed myself for what happened. But when you told me about Kachina... I realized there's a chance Malko might also be alive, fighting for survival in the Night Kingdom. But that happened several years ago, right? The Pyro Archon said all life within the Night Kingdom eventually becomes one with the Sea of Souls. There might not be much hope, but I still have to try. Malko and I promised each other, even if we never managed to root out the Abyss for good, we would fight together until the end. All right, let's get to it. I'll start searching for the conceptualized version of Kachina's ancient name. If you see any fragments scattered around the area, please collect them. Make sure you prepare yourselves for battle. As I said, the stone will link the mortal realm to the Night Kingdom. The Abyss will likely emerge in response. 
thing. It must be one of those fragments Bichama mentioned. Let's get closer. Not long. We're getting close. Take it! I found Kachina's ancient name. Hang in there, Malko. Just a little longer. Something's not right. The power of the Abyss is getting stronger. The Abyss is corroding his body! Vichama, you can't keep going. You'll die! I should have died five years ago. I just need a little more time. Please, I'm almost there. Thank you. Whoa, watch out! The power of the Abyss is strong! Him. Why? We can't wait any longer. Pull him away from the stone, Muolani. I already tried, but the power of the abyss has him in a chokehold. It's like he's tied to the stone with an invisible rope. In that case, we have no choice. I'm sorry, Sea Molly. Get back! Chaska, wait! The stone's power was spiraling out of control. The only way to stop it was to destroy it. You were all caught in the shockwave of the explosion. You might feel dizzy for a while, but that's normal. Give us a heads up next time, will you? You're lucky we managed to dodge it in time. I thought I said to get back. Yeah, barely a second before you made it go poof. Not everyone has your reflexes, Chaska. We were this close to getting dragged into the explosion. Okay. I'll be more careful next time. At least Kachina's ancient name is still in one piece. Wait, where's Vichama? Vichama! Uh, uh. Vichama! I couldn't find Mako's ancient name. It must be completely gone by now. Once your ancient name disappears, there's no coming back. From the very beginning, I knew there was a slim chance that Still. And now... <sighs> it's too late to save him. 
From the minute he left that day, it was already too late. Pichama. I'm sure he's heard enough condolences over the years. Let's just give him some space. Huh? What's that in your hands, Vichama? It looks like something's glowing! Huh? Uh, this is... Hey, Malko. Got any strength left? Not enough to swing a sword, but to say a few last words. Sure. <laughs> Too bad no one will get to hear them. I never thought I'd actually die on this mission. <laughs> Not that I'm afraid to die. It's just hard thinking about my mom's face when she hears the news. Guess I have something to be thankful for then. My parents died a long time ago. They won't have to mourn me. <sighs> Pisak! <sighs> Always had to beat me at everything, didn't you? Right to the end, you were never one for goodbyes. Maybe you're right. Maybe no one will get to hear our last words. But just in case... Vichama... I'm so glad you didn't come with us. Don't be sad. Just... Keep on living. For the both of us. <sighs> Was that... a memory? Seems like we were able to salvage something after all. Of course. Seeing him, hearing his voice again, it makes me unbelievably happy. But it also brings with it an even deeper pain. A deeper pain? Why? Malko was always the type to put on a brave face, but in that memory just now, his hands were shaking, and his smile was forced. For all these years, I regretted not being able to fight alongside him to the end, and now I know, at the end of his life, he was thinking the same thing. Bichama! I'm fine. Actually, I heard Chief Wyna wasn't really on board with your plan to go to the Night Kingdom. When you asked for my help, I hesitated too. I knew helping you find your friend's ancient name meant leading you one step closer to danger. But I also understood why you had to try. Everyone has regrets in life, but not everyone gets the chance to make up for them. Once allowed to fester, guilt strips us of our most valuable qualities as warriors. In that sense, we might as well choose the braver path from the very beginning. If I could do it all over again, I would have followed Malko to the front lines no matter what. Even with an injured leg, there were still things I could have done. That way, even if the outcome stayed the same, I still would have fought alongside him to the end. There are critical junctures in life, and if you don't seize the chance to act, there's no going back. That's something I had to learn in hindsight, but you're still at the crossroads of your journey, so... I hope you can walk away without regrets. Thank you, Vichama. I feel even more determined now. Kachina will come back to us. I'll make sure of it. I promised I would find her, and I intend to keep that promise. That's good to hear. <coughs> Strange. <clears throat> My body, it's... Once abyssal corrosion enters the body, a portion will fuse itself to your internal organs. Even though the Traveler possesses powers of purification, 
the corrosion can never be fully eradicated. Thanks to him, though, you were only briefly exposed. Slowing your breathing and controlling your emotions should help you keep the symptoms in check. Huh. That does make me feel better. You seem very knowledgeable about all this. Just speaking from experience, that's all. Anyway, we've recovered Kachina's ancient name, so we're off to a great start. Let's get Vichama back to his tribe and tell Wine of the good news. Oh, um, and apologize for destroying the Spirit Speaker Stone. We had no choice, though, so he'll probably understand. Mm, right? <laughs> Koichi, are you really gonna just stand there like that? I don't know what you want from me. I think you know exactly what I'm trying to say, Uncle Wina. I can hear it in your voice. Honestly, it's just one thing after another with you two. Huh. They're back. Koichi? What are you doing here? Ha! <laughs> don't play dumb with your own sister. You know exactly why I'm here. My apologies, everyone. I just need to borrow Tosca for a few minutes. You come with me. <sighs> I'll be just a moment. Who is that? Kuichi, Chaska's younger sister. Although the two aren't actually related by blood, it's kind of a long story. It's not really my story to tell, but I guess it's not a secret. You see, Chaska was actually raised by cuckoo sores. She was afflicted with a rare disease when she was a child, and abandoned in the wild as a result. The Abyss found her out there, all on her own, and tried to devour her. But in the end, all that did was trigger her will to live. That strength of will pushed her to survive but it also planted a seed of conflict within her. Eventually, she was adopted by the Cuckoo Source. Wherever they went, she followed, getting into fights right and left. For some reason, Paimon can totally imagine that. <laughs> well, when Chaska finally returned to human society, it was Quichi's parents who adopted her. At the time, Chaska still had a habit of getting into fights, so Quichi was always taking her around apologizing to everyone. Ah, uh, I remember those days. One of those fights was definitely with me. But, you know, kids, you're fighting one minute and your friends the next. Eventually, she found a way to rein in that desire to fight. And now she's who people call to resolve conflicts. She's known as the Peacemaker. It sounds like she still argues with Koichi, though. Don't siblings usually stop fighting when they get older? <sighs> That's partly my fault. Quichi asked me to stop Chaska from doing anything dangerous, but you probably know by now, once Chaska makes up her mind, there's no changing it. Oh, I get it. No wonder you tried to talk us out of going to the Night Kingdom. Chaska even said that wasn't like you. I'm all for your adventure. You need to take risks when you're young. Because by the time you're my age, you couldn't attempt something like that even if you wanted to. Better try now than live with regrets later. That's what I say. Still, I can understand where Kuichi's coming from. In the end, nobody wants to sit back and let a loved one put their life on the line. Alright, it's just the two of us now. You have one minute to explain yourself. I don't have anything to say. You don't have to approve, but you should know I only do what's necessary. That attitude is exactly the problem. It's like you don't care. You try to sneak off to the Night Kingdom behind my back and then play it down as if it's just a trip abroad. Well, technically I am going abroad, right? Again with the excuses! <sighs> we agreed, didn't we? There are four levels of danger. 
If it's not something urgent, you can only engage in level 2 danger and below. You can only go up to level 3 if a situation is so dire there's absolutely no alternative. But a trip to the Night Kingdom? If that's not a level 4, I don't know what is! And you were just going to sneak into the place without saying anything! What do you mean, sneak into the place? I always planned on walking in there with my head held high. You bought off Uncle Wyna, didn't you? He promised me he'd stop you from doing anything dangerous. Oh, it's like he didn't even try. You feel like he went back on his word. What if I told you my mind was made up, and there was nothing he could have done? Not even by force. Oh, I knew it! So he did try to say something, but you didn't listen. This is important. If you were in my shoes, you'd make the same decision. You don't know that? I'm a doctor, and I handle logistics. If you're going to waltz into a dangerous situation where you could lose control at any moment, it's my duty to say something. All right, whatever. Anything else? <sighs> you... <sighs> what do you mean, anything else? Why don't you reflect on what you've done and promise me you'll stay put? Time out. Is this one of our normal arguments or a serious one? Chaska, does it sound like I'm joking? Then... You need to know something. What happened to Kachina was partially my fault. I can't leave her there to die. That's not who I am. But the person you become when you lose control, that's also not who you are. That's a different issue. You said it yourself. A person is only as good as their morals. If I want to live in Natlan, I need to display qualities that make me worthy of this nation. I've also told you that managing your condition is equally important. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. <sighs> All right, let's stop this here. If we keep going, I might actually have to get serious. And I think Wyna prefers his roof attached to his house. Is that a threat? That sounds like a threat to me. Uh, Koichi! <sighs> Younger sisters are supposed to listen to their elders. Uh, so, you're really going to go, no matter what I say? I'm supposed to be your sister. Then support me. I'll be back. All you have to do is wait. Uh, Chaska. So, that's it. Why'd you have to turn out to be so... Darn... annoying. Uh, you two are something else. Something you wanted to say? I know you aren't related by blood, but you two sure are similar. Really? You know, I said that very thing to Kuichi not too long ago. And she reacted the exact same way, down to the very tone of voice. It's not my place to get involved, but I will say this. Try to spend a little more time with your sister. You're tough kids. That doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Thank you. Anytime. All right. If you're done with the spirit speaker stone, you might as well hand it over. According to Kinich, it's an important ceremonial artifact so it'd be safer to keep it with me. Um, about that. <sighs> if only Tone Gift Bard was here, he could have repaired it just like the Holy Liar. It might be in a few more pieces than you remember. Uh huh? I see. Hmm. <sighs> Sounds like it was an urgent situation. If someone's life was on the line, then you had no choice. Still, Sitlali's going to be a nightmare to deal with now that you've broken her stuff. I'll explain everything to her later. Stay safe out there in the Night Kingdom, okay? I'll wait here for your safe return.